Yo, what's good everybody? Welcome to this machine learning tutorial. Hope you are doing well. Today we're going to be doing some classification in this machine learning slash data science tutorial in which we look at some bank data and decide whether or not uh, people are going to make a uh, term deposit. So wait, I'll just show you where I got the data from. So I went to UCI and I found this data set that says the goal is to predict if a client will subscribe a term deposit, okay, which is our uh, independence variable. So basically, uh, if you've never done any machine learning or data science, this might be a little uh, vague or esoteric also. Uh, this is how we start. So we have this data, and if you go in the last video, I downloaded this data and I showed you how to make it, how to format it like this. Go to my last video and you'll see that. But once you get it to this uh, point, you'll see that we have several different columns of data, okay? And what we're trying to determine is whether or not somebody's gonna do one thing or the other, yes or no, based on uh, just a few of these, uh, these columns or features as they're called. So this is a type of supervised learning where we have features and then we have an independent variable that we are going to compare uh, our prediction to okay so we're gonna be doing logistic regression you can do classification with other algorithms like an SVM or something and it's a little confusing hold on my dogs freaking out sorry about that anyway it's a little confusing why it's called logistic regression when really it's a classification algorithm I'm sure there's some sort of historical reason but anyway uh, we're gonna take a couple of these variables we're gonna probably gonna take age uh, education balance and marital status or something I don't know we'll see and we are going to uh, predict whether or not, based on those variables, somebody subscribed to the term deposit. And uh, after that, we'll be able to basically predict what the outcome will be if there's new variables, okay? Um, if there's new, entirely new rows of people, somebody whose data we just acquired that we didn't train our model on. So, okay, you guys are probably a little bit confused. Let's. Let's get into some more basic stuff. Let's go to our editor. And we are going to be working in uh, Python because there just seems to be a lot of growth in the Python data science realm. Lots of new libraries, lots of cool stuff. And I would normally do something like this in R uh, just because I think it's better. But later on, I want to do some stuff with neural networks and multi-layered perceptrons, and I don't think R is really at that level, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm not really great with Python, so if I mess something up, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to fix it. Okay, so some things, if you've never done any machine learning, you should probably look up our poth a hypothesis, a cost function, and a gradient descent. Okay, and I think it'll, it'll be a lot better if you, uh, if you look these up on your own, uh, if you've never heard of them. They're simple concepts. Uh, try looking at the math, as to how they're determined. Uh, it'll help you get a better grasp on everything. And the math might be a little intimidating. That's why I'm not really doing any here. Uh, also, I'm not a mathematician, <laughs> but it's really, it's not that difficult, okay? Uh, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, it's just, it's important to know these concepts or the gist. Basically, a cost function uh, will tell us how to fit the best possible line uh, through our data in the case of like a regression, or in our case, it'll tell us how to split our data uh, what the best way to split our data is and gradient descent is a process through which we find the best parameters to use uh, in our cost function uh, so go ahead and look these up if you have no idea what they are just get a basic basic very basic understanding okay nothing crazy um, and once you're done come back and we're gonna do a couple of things we're gonna import the libraries so the first thing we're gonna do is import pandas and that's the only uh, Python library that we're gonna need right now so we're gonna say import uh, pandas as p as pd i like to abbreviate it uh, that's also a convention uh, now the next thing we're going to do is uh, get our information or all the data which if you guessed was this bank uh, spreadsheet you are correct so the way that we do that is uh, we can use pandas so we'll say data equals pd dot read underscore csv and we'll give it the name of our file, which in this case is bank.csv. Okay, and we'll save that. Oh, and by the way, something I should mention is um, if you have any, if you don't have any idea what this editor is, it's spider 
uh, spider for Python 3.6 and it's I find it to be very cool uh, to use in, in machine learning and data science uh, situations. You can use RStudio too, which is cool. Uh, if you want to get this, download something called Anaconda uh, or Conda, which is basically like a suite. It has all these uh, different programs in it. But yeah, this is something called Spider. It's got a, a editor and a console and like a variable and slash file explorer. So go ahead and download that if you want to be on the same page. It's, it'll make everything a lot easier, okay? than just running it from a terminal, which I, I typically enjoy. I don't really like IDEs, but for something like this, this just makes a lot more sense, especially when we get to plotting. So, okay, we've got our data. Okay, now remember, our goal is to uh, find what sort of uh, situations will predict a yes or a no, okay? Or will lead to a yes or a no. So in supervised learning, you wanna separate your your x's and your y's so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to separate all of our features from our outcome which is y and that's this is a little confusing because this data set has a field called outcome but don't worry about that our outcome essentially is this yes or no this binary uh situation this one or zero and you'll see we're going to turn this yes or no into one or zero uh later by encoding it so basically we're gonna have a, um, it's a matrix, really, it's a matrix of features uh, with dimensions of the whatever how many rows it has, which is like 4,000 by however many columns it is. So in this case, it's whatever this is, 10 columns or whatever. So we're only gonna use a couple. So that's our features. And then our independent variable, uh, which is a vector, is just Y. Okay, so it's gonna be zero or one, yes or no. So we're gonna have X and Y. So let's do that, let's define those. So we're gonna have x equals uh, data dot iloc and we're going to want all of the rows and let's decide which features we want to use so let's say i definitely to you know to determine if somebody is going to subscribe to this term deposit thing i want to know um, how old they are sure that's a good one um, their education and uh, I'll probably also use the balance that they have in their bank account. And I think that'll be enough. Okay, so we'll do age, uh, marital, no, let's do education, age, education, and balance. Okay, so that's three things, three features that we're gonna use to predict, um, which I'm gonna call it, y, which is our vector, you know, our independent uh, variable. So, uh, look, we look at those columns, so it was column zero, uh, one, two, column three, and four, five, zero, three, and five. So we'll say zero, comma, three, comma, five. And notice that this is also a, uh, an array, a list. So we'll say dot list, or dot list. What an idiot, dot value. So we want, we want the stuff that's inside of, of those cells. So uh, now we're gonna do Y, and we're gonna say Y data dot I lock and we'll take everything. And in our case, turned out that our Y is the last column. And in Python, we can just denote that by doing minus one and of course values. So save that and let's run this by selecting it. If you have spider, you can select it all and press shift and enter. And you can see that it runs here. Now, if you do, uh, I don't know, X, it'll return your uh, array of features your uh, these are your feature this is your feature matrix and if you do y you'll get nose nose and yes which is our independent variable we can also open up our data frame here and look at uh, all of our look at all of our information but remember uh, we are sort of filtering some of these columns out so you're going to want to take a look at x and y um, for for more specific information Okay, so the next step is to encode our variables. So you'll notice that in our um, feature matrix features or these columns here, the yellow ones, one of them, our education column, is is a categorical variable. Okay, it's not a, like a number, so we need to fix that. So balance and age are okay; these are numbers. However, education is not because we've got primary, secondary, tertiary, and um, later on, we're going to have to tell the computer or tell Python that there's no like relationship between primary and secondary. Okay. 
what we're going to do now by encoding is it's going to assign a number. And then we're going to have to tell Python that that number doesn't mean that it's better than another number. Okay, I hope that makes sense. But first, let's encode these. Let's turn this into a number. So education is, uh, well, first we need to import a library. So we're going to say from sklearn.preprocessing. Also, if you have spider, it auto uh, fills, which is very cool. We're going to say import label encoder. And we're also going to need another encoder, one hot encoder for what I mentioned uh, regarding uh, hot encoding uh, our variables. But for now, let's just, we're just going to use label encoder. So we're going to say label encoder, encoder, let's say x label encoder, whoops, to um, make sure we know what we're talking about. x label encoder, and we'll set it equals to a label encoder class. Okay, so now we've basically created this instance. And what we can do is we can say that the column that we want to change, because Python is a mutable language, you can change just this column and uh, everything else will remain the same and your new object will have an updated, uh, updated information. So what we're gonna say is first we're gonna look at where our, um, what is this, education column is on our matrix of features and it would be our second so it's zero one okay in in python so we want to say x and all the rows in the uh one column in the second column are is equals to label or x label encoder dot fit transform fit underscore transform and what we're going to pass in here is this that same object or that same instance and basically what we're doing is modifying uh, this this column right here we're going to modify all the rows in the second column of X okay, we're going to fit transform uh, with the label encoder object okay now I don't know if I'm going too in-depth here on this but I just wanted to make sense so that's what we're doing here Basically, essentially what this is going to give us, let's run it and we'll see, is um, an, an encoded new uh, matrix of features where education is no longer primary, secondary, tertiary, but instead it is now zeros and one, two, three, or whatever, depending on how many classes there are or how many different categories there are. So now if you do um, x1, X all the rows of one, which is the first or the second column of X, you'll see that it's been transformed from education, primary, secondary, tertiary, la la la, into uh, an array that has actual numbers. Okay, so this is something we can work with. Okay, we can't really work with words uh, in in Python, right? So, or in our machine learning algorithms, it's it needs numbers. Okay. Now there's something else we have to do. If we do this x1 after we've encoded it, we can now see that we have 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., etc. Okay. Now we need to tell our, uh, the machine that 0, 1, and 2, just because this is a 2, that doesn't mean that 2 is in any way uh, better than 0 or 1. Okay. And you, do, you use one hot encoder for that. So what we're going to say is we're going to create an object. Let's just say um, ohe equals one hot encoder to Gorical features. Now I've never I've never like really done this with Python, so I'm not sure what the conventions are for naming this thing. Uh, I just named it OHE, but there might be something else that um, people name it, you know, for, traditionally. Uh, but anyway, I'll just call it OHE. So we're gonna say which features we want to uh, do this to, which ones are categorical, and in our case. It is the uh, the first, I'm sorry, the number one uh, column, which, or the feature is number one. From, if you go zero, one, it's the second column, okay? Uh, so let's actually apply this to uh, X. So we'll say uh, OHE.fit transform, pass in X, and then let's transform it to array like that so that we can actually see it in our variable viewer. So let's run let's run this now we can look at X and what you'll see is that 
Uh, basically, what it did is it is it created dummy variables. Okay, so you can look into what dummy variables are. Um, but basically, instead of zero, one, two, uh, etc., it created new columns. So if it's a zero, it'll place a one there. If it's a one, it'll place a zero there. If it's a two, it'll place a zero there. But wherever it's zero, it'll put a one. Or wherever it's one, it'll put a one. Or wherever it's two, it'll put a one. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, like for example, say if we look at our uh, data, the first, or this is education, so what, let me open this up, what uh, zero corresponds to is primary. Okay, so you can see in our first row, primary is the education level, the second is secondary, the third is tertiary. So if you can see here in our independent variables, in our matrix of features, the zero, which corresponds to primary, is the first uh, row. So he, this guy, primary school. Second guy, secondary. You can see that because uh, we have a one here, which would indicate that he finished secondary. Tertiary uh, would be two here, and we have a one in, in our second, or our third row, number two, and in our fourth row, number three, he also uh, finished tertiary school. I don't know what that is, college. So as you can see here, we got tertiary and tertiary, two in a row. That's That corresponds to this one and this one. So basically what this did is it created a dummy variables um, just to make this easier to work with and in a way that the computer can understand. So we're done with that, with encoding our X variables. Now we can uh, encode the Y variable. Now if you remember, uh, we only need to encode our Y variable from uh, categorical to a number. We only need to uh, label encode. We don't need a one hot encode uh, because this is, well, this is a binary situation, so you know, yes or no. So we only need zero or one. Okay, that's what we want our outcome to be, uh, either one of those. So we're going to label encode Y. So what we'll do is Y label encoder equals, and we'll create an instance of label encoder, and then we'll say uh, we'll update y to be uh, y label encoder with fit transform applied. So we'll say y and uh, everything in y. Oops, what happened there? Is insert on? Did I press insert? Okay, there we go. Woo! Okay, so encoded our y variable. Let's run that, see what happens. Okay, and we can take a look at it, and our y's, which are yeses and no's, should now be zeros and ones. So we'll open up our data frame here, which says yes or no in the, the last column, or let me open up Excel. And you'll see in the last column, we've got yeses and no's. Oh, why does that keep happening? Yeses and no's, which correspond to zeros and ones. So let's see, we don't have a yes up until the 15th row. So we're gonna go to the 15th row, which in this case would be the 13th because of you know the heading and this starts at zero. Um, that would give us a one which corresponds to yes. Okay, if we keep going, we'll see another one way down on the 32nd and 38 through 41. So let's see, uh, 32nd, which would be the 30th, 33, 34, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we've got some yeses, some yeses. So our yeses and nos were turned into zeros and ones, or ones and zeros, uh, respectively. Okay, so that's what we did with label encoding. My boy, my boy, my boy